at 442. And we will receive our guests. Uh, thank you for coming. Is there anything specific on the agenda that folks are here to hear about or address or speak to? No, just the whole agenda. All right, fair enough. <laughs> Uh, are there any revisions to the agenda? Or board comments or committee comments before you yeah, board comments? Public comments and correspondence? Is there a motion to approve the minutes of April 9th and April 12th? So moved. Second. Second. Okay. Thanks. Any discussion? I just wanted to note for April 12th, I don't know if it's appropriate to, to note somewhere in the minutes that the meeting was conducted by teleconference. Yeah. And then the, the other piece is that the, the vote on the motion under 3.1 was done by roll call, and I, I believe it's traditional to record the vote in, in, that, in such a case, right? To who voted how? Who yes. voted how, like yes. each person, so. Yes, we'll have to do that. It was a unanimous group. Yep. Everyone. Yeah, yeah. Just list everybody's yeah. name and say. Uh, yeah. Can you just make a note of that? Yeah. Lisa, and we'll get on top of that. Do you put that public? I mean, uh, with the teleconferences? Are they able to call there in? There was a physical location, so the, there was a couple board members at the, uh, at the, the central office conference room. Uh, and then went everybody else by teleconference. And because we had this one vote, we did it by roll call, so mm -hmm. we can specifically hear each individual and how mm -hmm. they voted. Um, board members present on the uh, April 8th meeting. Matthew's name should be under board members present. Oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> I was there. <laughs> Any other discussion or amendments? None. All those in favor of approving the minutes uh, as discussed, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? So we'll go to 3.1. Uh, actually, I, I'm afraid I did not. I do. I do not know what petitions were received. Myself. Um, oh, sorry. Yeah, no, that's okay. No, well, I. Don't I think it was in the paper, but it I was see, in the paper. I Dave, see, Dave I didn't covered it well. So, um, um, I don't have all the names off the top of my head, but okay. there are. There's a person for every position at each town. The two folks I'm missing are the two folks from Worcester, frankly, off the top of my head. I can say their names. Okay. Yeah. That's yeah. Uh, so there, it's uh, Jonas Eno Van Fleet and um, Jael Polskamp. Yeah. That's the second. Yeah. Now can you spell them? <laughs> You'd like? Yeah, I would okay. actually. I, uh, Jonas J O N A S Eno E N O hyphen Van Fleet capital V A N capital F L E E T. Jael is J A I E L. And Pulse Camp is P U L S K A M P. Thank you. Maybe everyone wants both to talk about their both own town. Both good Dutch names, I, I want to add. Yeah, 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 yeah we know. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, second spell them. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we have representatives from every town, so maybe each town can. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. Sure, so Middlesex, it's uh, me, Chris McKay, and um, Marilyn Strachan. Uh, for Callis. There is me, Scott Thompson, and then the other, the one-year seat, is contested between Dorothy Naylor and Chris Cataret. And for Berlin, it's myself, Vera Frazier, and George Gross. Mm -hmm. Raise my failure, it's uh, Lindy Johnson and myself. Great. So I guess there's a question of whether or not this board would want to so offer a public forum. To you could. You don't. One of the things that we cleared up with the Secretary of State <laughs> is you don't need to have an informational meeting if it's about if it's for candidates only. Mm -hmm. So I think you should do something. I would <laughs> recommend that to you, but uh, there's no requirement. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, just in in sort of casting the usual seats. Um, there, <clears throat> pardon me, there appears to be interest among in the League of Women Voters to set up something. Um, uh, Kate, uh, Rainer. thank you, um, is, uh, would be sort of spearheading it, I guess. And Susan Clark is 
uh, a, a part of that organization and um, has the local, you know, the local knowledge. And the idea would be, as I understand it, to maybe organize something at U32 um, or at, at some convenient point for everybody. But, um, uh, and I was included in the conversation, and they wanted names and email addresses, so I gave them all the names according to David Delcor's list. Yeah. <laughs> and I found the, the email addresses because I knew them. And I also sent um, this the calendar, the meeting schedule, so that, uh, you know, I said, well, obviously we don't know about sporting events and music events and all those things, but somebody is going to be missing on any of these dates, mm -hmm. probably. So they have that. So they can get started and we can join in. I don't know how we want to do it. But I think that's it. I, I think I think it's a good idea from, from several points of view, mostly because I think a, a lot of the public have no idea that they're going to be voting on members from each town. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, just for sure. And the ballots yeah. aren't here yet. Yeah. <coughs> um, so I guess the yeah. question would be maybe, do we want to just hand this off to the League of Women Voters? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what's appropriate. I mean, I, I guess uh, I certainly don't. It's great that they have an interest and want to organize it. Um, on the other hand, I want to be sure that it happens, I guess, yeah. you know, and, and to be sure that, you know, if we feel some sense of responsibility to make sure that it happens, that we, yeah. I don't know, take a decision and maybe we talk to the League of Women Voters about if they want to take the lion's share of organizing it, that's fine, but mm -hmm. just that it's sanctioned by this body, I guess, or something, or, or um, yeah, I don't know how to say it better than that, but maybe, there's probably yeah. a way. Yeah, and maybe Lucy Wicker had asked about it too, and she had mentioned that uh, the signposts that are, are town traditional, and I know that, uh, I don't know if it's Middlesex that does the same thing, does a little SH candidate to do a little blur where it's 150 words or something, mm -hmm. that would be helpful. For, for them or even the women, the legal women voters to have her candidate. There's not enough time to send it out, but it could be sent via email or if it's put in a newsletter, it just says a little bit about each candidate. I could send you what traditionally has gone into the, the signpost, but both Rosie and Edie had asked mm -hmm. to just mm -hmm. know, and it just helps because you know, people who have the people that can't attend the forum, you'll be able to have a little description. Mm -hmm. Pretty much, mm -hmm. what what is your interest on it? Mm -hmm. And then. So one way we could proceed date. is to, you know, have a motion to, I have a forum and a date to be determined and appoint a couple people in this board to reach out to the legal women lawyers and kind of make sure that a date gets decided and. Is there something like that? Does that? Yeah. That sounds yeah. good. Yeah. yeah. And call well, it something it, like meet the candidates. I mean, it's got to like happen that. pretty. It's got to happen pretty quickly, right? I would yes. suggest. Yes. I would suggest that you do it um, either the eighth or the fifteenth, which you're having a meeting already of this group. You can. We could, you know, bound. We we have a six o'clock meeting, a five thirty meeting. Sorry, so you could do like a seven o'clock meet the candidates, type of thing. Mm -hmm. Is there is there a, um, a meeting that is. Designed or designed to be a public meeting, so we're kind of coordinate it with that. So, so that's what I'm saying. People come out and, and they're there. Is it just the vote? It's just the vote. Right now, there's not much that, um, I mean, without looking at the schools, what's going on at each school, there's going to be something going on every night the way okay. spring's gone with the weather right now. So we're going to have something going the 15th is a Wednesday? The 15th is a Wednesday, which is the Wednesday before the election. Yeah. The 8th is the, you know, two weeks before. Right. The 8th or the 9th? 9th, sort of I'm sorry, the 9th. Thank you, Dorothy. I'd sort of be inclined for the 15th because it's, it's proximate to the election, but it also provides longer time for the candidates to maybe be available and prepare. Yeah. 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 Or, that would be great, except I'm gone that week. I'm um, out of town. So yeah, 15th to 19th. I think you're going to have some of that. There's going to, and I'm not saying anything to you, Scott. It's just no, like no, it's no, going no. To, I know. It's the way the schedules are well, right now. The other thought is that uh, at least our town clerk has received a lot of requests for mail-in ballots. 
to vote early. Mm. So it might be better to have it the ninth so that people can get that information before they start to vote. We could do it on the eighth, I believe, was the other day. I, 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 I slept. I meant to say the ninth. The eighth. I meant to say the ninth. I meant to say the ninth. The eighth is a do, is a doty school board meeting, but I mean, it doesn't mean you have to have it on transition either. I was just suggesting that. And the ninth is a Thursday, right? It's the ninth is a Thursday, Thursday meeting of this body. I mean, I think that would be good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, good. Thanks. May ninth. May ninth, seven p.m. Yeah. We do a cafeteria type of style, so we have a. And I guess we can do it without objection, so we won't have like a, just saying without objection, we're going to plan to do a public forum for candidates for the WCUSD uh, board on May 9th at 7. Yeah. yeah. People are out of work. And so are there, are there uh, people who, who are, that are here who want to uh, volunteer to uh, outreach to some of the folks that expressed interest? and? I would be happy to, um, and Dorothy. I'll help. Ahead. Yeah, I I don't. Yeah. Is okay. that is that acceptable? It's acceptable to me. <laughs> <laughs> no, you you yeah, yeah yeah. I mean, we're sort of already connected it to them, yeah. and I can go home tonight and email them and say we discovered decided we'd like your help or your. So Dor Dorothy, do just it. if you can give me twenty four hours, because I don't have the U thirty two schedule. Oh, right. Okay. So I want to make sure oh, the yeah, facilities space. are ready. Space, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think it, we can move it around between auditorium, cafeteria, even 120, 131, but right. I'd rather not. I think, right. I, just, I just don't know how many people, no, that's fine. people will have. So I just, I need to run the calendar for the building just to mm -hmm. see. But I can get that to you by like noon tomorrow. Yeah, that will work. Okay. I might just say we want your services and yeah, let yeah, you know the yeah. time. Yeah. We're working on the place. And I assume that you'll be in touch with the candidates, obviously, as well, right? So. Well, I, they have the email address, so I think they were planning on doing that. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll find out. And so we don't even have to do that. I mean, but we, this I, I committee. Think it would be, be nice if to get maybe so that we can have it in, at the Washington Central website. Get oh, yeah, little, yeah, yeah. We'll go. Get a, get a little blurb of each candidate, so for the people that can attend the meeting, mm -hmm. they right. know who they are and just... <coughs> well, I'll, we'll ask them what they think, what they're planning, and we can say, well, what about this? As well, well? The only reason I'm telling you is because the, the clerks, so like Rosie and those have said that they have had people, have had a handful of people that won ballots and questions about a, meeting the candidates or just having information about the candidates. So we have something on the website that... That will good. That will work. I think it's fine if they run with it. I would just ask you to ask them to keep you in the loop because <clears throat> I really appreciate that they want to do this, but again, I feel like it's somewhat our responsibility to make sure. Yes, that yeah. well, I, think they, gonna, I think they will. We're not going to completely. Yeah, yeah. No, I get it. Just, uh, yeah. We'll, we'll send you some emails once in a while. Yeah, you know. what's happening. All right. Make sure your box doesn't get empty. Sounds, sounds good. So, is there? I mean, I heard floors talk about at things wanting to go on the website for yeah, what people are. Separate. Yeah. Is that something that wants that's wanting to be done? And I just want to make sure we coordinate it so we get it up. I'm not, you know, Scott or Dorothy, are you going to coordinate that and make sure we get that? Is that something I've got to email everybody and ask them I to could, send? We could do that. Do you think you could do that? We sure. Do that. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. You, would you ever just put out the? Um, Invitation for folks to send in some, but and give a deadline that have yeah, by this time so we can. I like your thinking, Chris. Yeah, that if we had it in by Tuesday or Wednesday of next week, okay, we could easily just literally copy paste. But send it to where? Send it to Krista Mativier. Okay. Mm -hmm. Scott. Okay. I yeah, know you have Krista's info. Yes. But you can say that to everybody and just pass your email along and say, "Get it to us by end of business Tuesday." Great. I'm just going to call it. You guys can change the date, but that'll take it'll take us twenty four to forty eight hours to get up on the website. Sounds good. Okay. 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 Anything else on three point one? Do you want any sort of uh, information going out to folks about voting and understand? Because this is a different voting mechanism than they're used to. That they're not just voting for their town; they're voting for all five town representatives. And they have ten votes each. And they have, they have 
two votes in each town. Right. So or one t- one vote per position, actually. Right. Because it's gonna the way the ballot's being designed is I'll just use Scott. He's running for the three year term in Cal's. Mm-hmm. There's his name will be on the ballot plus a write in for that mm-hmm. one position. Right. That's why there were two separate articles. Mm-hmm. There were five separate articles on the warning. Right. <laughs> so everybody votes ten times. Right. Chris was <laughs> getting there, but I just it's it's the more the clarity. Yeah, they don't have ten votes too. And, and that's what it's I, not I, ten I, votes I can give to Chris. Votes for <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, what bothers me too is that Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> People who may not be in, even interested in voting is like, oh, my town, there's no competition, so why shall I bother? So I, I think part of our job is to actually get people to vote, whether there's a contest or not. I, I don't know. I feel like maybe I'll just suggest this. People can make other suggestions, but maybe the most efficient thing to do would be for me to try to draft something. That could go out on front porch forum just about the yeah. date of the vote, the polling times, the yeah. mm-hmm. you know the number of positions, yeah. the fact that you're going to be voting on all ten positions. You know, Especially if you can put it on all five. Yeah, you can do that through. Or can us. distribute you can both. That, you can. And I can to, just we can do it right through us. We yeah. Yeah. And I can I can work with uh, you know Dorothy and Scott on you know just checking the language and stuff, and then yeah I'll send it out to the chairs of the five boards and mm-hmm. you can do it that way. Yeah. So. And in that same one, you can say about there's uh, going to be a little bit on the Washington Central website about each candidate. Mm-hmm. And, can and is it, I, I don't know if you can see, but this is sort of how we have done it in the past. So Darcy was running, Stephen was running, Carrie was running, and it's just a little blur uh-huh. of you know the, the constable or Kim. So you keep, and you say 150 words or something like that. Mm-hmm. So that it can fit. Okay. Well, I'm whatever I said, I can that. direct people to something like that, but I'm... Yeah, right. no, 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 it's, yeah. that's it's what it's said. Yeah. Each process. person has to write their own. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Exactly. Okay. I will uh, plan to do that. Okay. Anything else on 3.1? Okay, so we'll go to Articles of Agreement, and I'll, I guess I'll just say I'm hoping that we don't get into a deep discussion of Articles of Agreement tonight because we actually have some important stuff relating to the transition notifications and budget to talk about tonight, but I guess I thought maybe Floor, as the uh, former chair of the Articles Committee, that you could kind of share again with the group kind of uh, where we're at and kind of what remains to be done and maybe we could think about on what schedule we could try to accomplish that this board so we we finished in in theory we finished all the articles and we gave two recommendations for the debt which was the the most the more controversial one i don't have the articles right in front of me but there was consensus in in everything else and we were going to pass that to ourselves and then decide what we were gonna do on the on the debt. But we had enough to put up to to vote if we want to put up to vote the not the recommendations but the four other articles that were pretty simple. So I, I don't think we would need a really long meeting to, to do that. And if we did a vote if we did that we would vote on the same day as the as the election. As the budget. As, as, as the, the budget. budget. As the budget. As the budget. So, <laughs> and June, yeah. That that would be the idea. So is the would the idea be that we would choose between one of the two options that was identified for that or and then I, I don't know where the school the sort of uh, article four B or whatever it was where that we ended can't up really or, change article four, right? So what, what okay. we were doing was for, for a, a, a school closure, for example, was for later. So there was agreement, okay. and I think it's important for all of the members there that that went out, right? I'm talking to kind of the same people. So, <laughs> so yes, we're always the same people. <laughs> so, yeah. so, so just say, oh, no, no we were not at the last meeting, but there was, a, there was agreement that, for example, in, you know, for school closure, there, you know, it was either a, a veto. I, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't have my notes. Yeah. There were like four different options or something. But we, 
Because that would be two. two. We okay. narrowed it down to two. the other one was but representation yeah. of members. And, and then future years was one we were going to pass off to this board to make a final decision. Yeah, so we have, I, in my memory, we have four articles that we agreed on. We want a bigger board. We, we want to either expand the you can't close schools to those two options, the veto, or extend the, the, the years that you can't close. Those, those, are, those are two of them. The other one that we wanted a, a policy, but that's a recommendation, a policy for a tuitioning kids for, it's not tuitioning. Uh, Access kids going to different schools in the yeah. district. School choice. School, school choice, yeah. That was not full choice, but a school policy, but the, the, the giving that to the board, said, yeah. that's one of the recommendations. I can take my notes so I don't make your head spin right now. And, um, is it that on? Yeah. Uh, is it on the website? I think it is. So. Yeah, I'm just. I'm gonna just pull out my last uh, minutes because I was not prepared. Oh, here it is. it's one of them, but this is not. Here it is. Yeah. Yeah. So the school, the school councils, the the input. It was pretty. Those articles were all the ones that went through Chris Leopold already, and we were happy with them. So those were the ones that we wanted to put out to vote. The only two that we didn't have final consensus was the debt. We had the two the two options, and um, and school closure. We needed to finalize if it was uh, five years, or you know we we, we were going to do it for more than five years. So I guess in broad strokes, um, you know, the, the board that gets elected on May 21st is the board that will warn the vote on the budget mm -hmm. right, for the WCUUSD. Uh, so I guess my assumption is that it will be either appropriate or uh, certainly more convenient if that board also is warning at the same time a vote on amendments to the <coughs> agreement. Okay. If there yeah. are, and, and it sounds like yeah. unless unless there is a, a groundswell surge uh, uh, campaign for writing <coughs> candidates, that there will be some, um, you know, pa parallel among current mm -hmm. board members and people who will be serving on that new board. Um, so. I, I, with that in mind, it seems like we, the transition board, I, I think, uh, ceases to exist at the moment that the new board gets sworn in, which will happen very shortly after the. I'm planning a meeting on the, the day after the twenty second. Yeah, let's say business and it's done within two to three days to get that budget. <coughs> so we basically have to decide this. This group has to decide by May twentieth, let's say. Yeah. Uh, what we want to recommend to that new board to to uh, to do to warn a vote, a vote of amendments and what amendments so can I give you a technical piece sure <laughs> and I don't mean to throw this as a monkey wrench just want you to be knowledgeable of information you this board has the authority to warn that election on the 25th you can you will be seated within the 30 and 40 days and you have the authority by the draft articles of agreement to propose to the voters draft articles I I'm understand not to do that. that. I'm just no, no, I, I appreciate the point, and I get it. I just wonder if, um, yeah, but we, we could warn, warn the budget, but I guess. Mm -hmm. we you can't, can't do that. You can't do that. Well, how is that? You know? That It says in the draft articles that you give a rec recommended budget to the But it also says, board. I guess Article 9 is the one that says that we basically have all the authority. authority yes, and, I understand. You know, it's a little <laughs> bit confusing there, but I'm just saying, like, it seems to me like, if you have two different boards warning two different things for the same day, and you end up with different ballots, or like, I don't even know what the, it could be crazy. I'm just trying to say, like, let's try to keep it as simple as possible for voters, because it's already complicated enough. God knows. Um, I think what I would suggest is that we have just one meeting, where we, which is what we had said after that last meeting. We were just going to get all of the, we didn't even think that we, needed to get them through Chris again because all of those had gone through Chris but we just get a final draft I guess it has to go to Chris level we get a final draft from from him of what of what we have so far that 
we know is, is clean and we review it because in essence at that last meeting we were, even though there was not everybody there, we were in agreement of, of, of most of it so that at that meeting we can just talk about those other or there's two, and then we give those recommendations to the transitional board to to, to the new board to warrant the. Or, or we decided this meeting. I, I think there was agreement from all of us that we want to put the articles to the vote. Yeah, I think that's true. And so, I think I think the new board should be the one doing it because I agree. You know, yeah. rather than yeah, it's gonna be their responsibility. Yeah. Yeah. And it's gonna be a question of just finding and making the time. To have those conversations, which well, the most important thing is really the the forum. I'm not too worried about our conversations because there was agreement, and I, I'm happy to put them all together. I'm just not prepared. To yeah, I mean, honestly, the the part that that sort of I where I like run into a brick wall mentally every time this <laughs> comes up is that there were things we didn't decide on, specifically the debt and the school closure issue that we never did reach a decision about. We just have a set of options. Mm -hmm. but we can't put a set of options out to the voters. Well, that's um, when the new board would have to, if they're going to put that out there, yeah. other than the default, would have to decide on one, one of the yeah. options. So we had the, the new board? board. Yeah, because yeah, the, the new board, board won't have any time to do that. Like, they will yeah. be elected on the 21st, they will meet on the 22nd, they have a the day, or, a day or two, they've got to warn the meeting. Okay, the so, the, so then if, if the, uh, we want the new board to recommend the articles, then we would have to, as a transition board, make a recommendation of a set of articles, Without make any choices among the recommendations, and forward that. That's right. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's my impression. Yeah, yeah. and for the legal work, because you want the legal, the warning is going to be very particular for articles. Chris right. has told me that. He said, mm -hmm. I need a couple weeks lead time to make sure that warning is ex buttoned up really tight. <coughs> so, 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 so you don't leave anything open that can be undone. We're basically looking at wrapping it up then by the, the 15th. 15th. I yeah. would suggest the 8th. Well, right, because if you have any couple I'm weeks to get legal review, for the 24th, the <laughs> I want two weeks to get through his office to get it really tight, have a warning, because that you're going to have different articles on each amendment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why don't we have a major, so we have two meetings then. We have a meeting on the, the 2nd. Yep. And a meeting on the 8th. 9th. 9th. Ninth. Ninth. Yes. The, sorry, I, I, I put know, that in your right. head. <laughs> so we'll have to budget some, I mean, I know we have a, a presentation or something next week, right, on, um, you know, uh, sort of budget issues and. We're going through a lot of it tonight, and then we'll get into more, there's going to be a lot of motions next meeting. Laura and I, depending on where we get tonight, we are going to bring in a lot of actions for this. Okay. This committee. Well, this I guess committee. I would su I would suggest that we we can come back to articles of agreement, but maybe let's move into these other transition issues and budget issues, and then maybe we can reserve ten minutes at the end to kind of look at the work that's in front of us and try to figure out you know how we schedule our time to address exactly. Can I ask one yeah. question about the articles? What level of um, Consensus does this group have to have to recommend one set of articles? Is it just simple, just a majority? Yes. yes. Yeah. Consensus of the majority. Mm -hmm. That's what you need. Okay, so let's move on to uh, 3.3. So I'm going to have you turn to page five in your packet. Um, for about the past month and a half, Lori, in particular, has been the one receiving queries from our outside partners, and many of them benefit partners that help us assure staff benefits, and um, saying that we need to know what your organizational structure is going to be so we can set up and ensure that benefits are rolling on July 1 for your employees. <laughs> A good example I'm just going to take is health care, and you all know that we have a uh, health care reimbursement account. And that takes a card that we all have for our names. As we change either the plan, which we're doing by the contract that was a, that you agreed to with the teachers, requires new cards. But when you change entities, you have to reset up all those accounts. And you have to reset up the accounts too when you change your plans. So Blue Cross Blue Shield is saying to Lori right now and to us, hey, we needed to know yesterday, as in like this past month, what structure you're going to be in July 1st to assure that all your 
employees have their cards in their hands ready to go on July 1st. Um, and so there we're getting queried, and we and Lori did a nice job, and she can give more detail about each of these of how we're getting queried and the time physically to change the organization. So I'm not talking about it's, it's about the time their their side their work internally to change everything for for employees to be able to have not see any break in their benefits or access. Am I getting that all clear, yeah. Lord? Yes. So maybe you can give another example from another. Um, well, DataPath currently has prescription debit cards that employees have. Those go through like a Visa MasterCard company. Mm -hmm. So they need this information like yesterday so that they can start issuing these new debit cards for our staff so that they would have them in their hands to pick up their prescriptions on July 1st. The same with our dental plan. Um, that's another one that they really need to know as soon as possible because again everyone would get a new dental card and it's all going to be consolidated into one bill and one entity. Um, when it comes down to other items on the list um, we've just got to notify the Office of Child Support and Social Security obviously. Um, Vemers will probably be bringing you some action items for next week's meeting uh, to have the board authorize the new plan and we actually have to figure out who we would be offering that to. So um, we can talk more about that at the next meeting. Um, any questions on benefits? Mm -hmm. um, so most of them would just require a letter where we tell them here are the seven old account numbers. They all get, all those employees get moved into one. Um, others have um, like HIPAA documents that Traditionally, Bill would have signed without any board permission because last year you gave him permission to authorize contracts and issue um, documents on our behalf. So this new board would need to, to reauthorize Bill to sign these documents again so that we have that in the minutes um, so that when we go to have signed documents that his signature is valid. Um, when it comes down to other items on the list, um, the state of Vermont's already looking for um, information with regard to where would they send money we want money um, in August and so in order to set up a new vendor we have to set up new bank accounts and have those up and running it takes the time to do that um, we have a treasurer now Mary Ormsby mm -hmm. so in talking to her she's come up with some parameters as the treasurer on what um, she would expect and we've reviewed that with our auditors on what accounts would we need and why would we need them so we'd be going from probably 30 bank accounts down to six or seven. So just in terms of the mm -hmm. um, legislation that may provide the option of stalling the merger for a year, mm -hmm. um, provided if it's the Senate version, board votes to mm -hmm. you know, yep. exercise yeah. that option. Um, what would, I mean, does that mean that these accounts would I mean, you can have dueling accounts, or is no. there going to be, um, or is it just doesn't matter what, just one of those right. entities in existence, even if it goes into effect operationally in a year? Um, is, this, is there any um, problem, like if giving the authorization now and saying, oh, we're going to give all these authorizations and notifications, uh, does that then tie it, you know, tie the, the, the board into saying, oh, we cannot exercise the option of putting it off for a year if that option is available? That's true. That's true. I don't, um, yes, it does you do that. you're right. It does well, the that. legislature's too little, why, too late. This is why this is why yeah. we're bringing you this issue. Okay. It, it, yeah. And it, it, you know, one of the things, and I sent a memo that some of you all would have gotten in your U32 memo uh, mail email that I sent to the staff. I mean, the, you all of the, the boards across Washington Central have been, hey, we need to protect the staff, and we're bringing you these issues because these are staffing issues. Mm -hmm. And, and I'm trying to give you as much flexibility. Lori and I have said yeah. we want to try to give you as much flexibility as we can. <laughs> really but they're saying, hey, if you want us to continue without breakage of health, it's May 1st, no it's, later than. I've been getting letters from um, V High. Yeah. And, and they just sent one again this week saying, you know what, we still haven't heard from you guys. You know, I'm, obviously they've been reading the paper, but mm -hmm. um, they're saying we have to have no later than May 1st information on whether we're issuing new insurance cards or not. So once they issue them, it, there's no turning back. We are going so what, forward. What if we didn't? What if they didn't get the okay by May first? What does that mean? 
then that means that I guess you're not going to have a new entity. So it's almost going the other way. It, you can't well, get you can't, can't if if you have to go to one entity. We can't guarantee that employees will have there the benefits. Be a break. The, the, yeah. the, are we talking about whether there will potentially be a break in access, like mm -hmm. if the new entities? Um, yes, because it's the new board decision mm -hmm. right. decide that one way. You know, provided there's legislation, um, and so. But if we ended up going ahead with all these notifications, the option would be erased. I'm assuming. True. We have to go forward, and employees need to get their prescriptions. Okay. And, and it's not just the legislation. There's also the Court lawsuit here. that's still out there that um, even though part of it has been, you know, dismissed so that it can go to the Supreme we, we Court. Told, we totally understand that. What we're saying yeah. is we need you to make a decision. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So because the employees, you know, and I thought the employees needed to know before tonight's meeting. So they weren't hearing about this through the newspaper. So they have all been informed of today yeah. of this important topic. That this is actually more important than the budget we're talking about next. And I believe mm -hmm. it. Um, so if then we we combine and and move ahead with the single accounts, um, and then if you know the courts come back and say stop, don't consolidate until whatever is taken care of. Um, does that then leave us high and dry in the other direction? Have we um, then got an, an operative consolidated account when all the other you know, single um, entities continue? I would just have to deal with that at the time. Oh, Lori, you're... No, honestly, <laughs> you're I just saying. can't so, say no. anything about that other than that. So yeah. can I ask, the, with the uh, new accounts, <coughs> single accounts, um, they wouldn't become operative until July 1st, right? True. I okay. need to set them up. Yep. There will be no money deposited until July 1st. And the other ones would continue in operation until the um, new ones were opened and transfers occur. until right until so June, all the checks cleared right and june mm -hmm. 30th or whatever. june 30th is okay. june 30th is july 1st is the yeah. cut over right. yeah june 30th okay. would be the last day to issue checks on the old bank accounts yep and then whatever we end up doing with the funds which is going to be another conversation um would happen july 1. so okay. if the articles in the towns also don't pass or something with the budget doesn't pass mm -hmm. this the articles don't the, the, the articles won't, 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 won't yeah. change this the budget we're going to talk about budget and cash flow in a bit I sent you that in this memo, but right now this is the articles do not have any impact on this part. Mm -hmm. yeah. So just to um, you know, sort of confirm what you were saying before, the legislature's antics have been overtaken by the clock, basically by the calendar, by an operational clock of yeah. getting ready for July one. Right. Right. Okay. For that option. Yes. Good. That's an excellent way to summarize mm -hmm. it. Scott. Yeah, the other thing is that whatever the legislature is doing, they have been very clear that they don't intend to change F46. They're just extending the time. So this will be things that we would need to do either next way. Year. Mm -hmm. it, next year, right? Yes. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so in essence, we would be doing, unless, unless when the lawsuit comes out with yeah, something, I think that this, was is, the whole this idea is stuff that we... create space for the judicial branch to kind of weigh in. Yeah. And um, without there being just this horrendous mess in the event that something different happens that you have to But what in. I'm saying is that we would, this <coughs> sort of gives us time, we continue to follow those steps. If the lawsuit was that stopped uh, on it, you know, we, we will deal and at we the have time. To we, it. Yeah, yeah, we will deal yeah. at the time with that. But for right now, we can just continue to sort of the spirit of the legislature, we will continue to do the steps. Yeah, you can't to get us there. Both. True. We're we're at the point where the track isn't dual anymore. Yeah. yeah so it's going this doing, way or this way. Yeah. 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 We would just be moving forward. Same those New Yorker cartoons. So. <laughs> yeah. Can I ask a question? I mean, does that question does that what is the ramifications on even the court case itself? Does this lock us into is it one more step toward not being able to return? If it was, I would say don't do it. We would will deal with the mess. It's part of the mess that they've created. I can actually speak to that. Um, I have been working on the software conversion to consolidate the books, and every account is separate. It's currently set up by building, 
And so to break it back apart would be just like putting it together? Because there's a separate building code and everything. How is it perceived? So, and again, mechanically, you can do that. I get that. The question is, how is that perceived within the legal world of consolidation? That's an issue. Is this, uh, but does this in itself carry? I mean, it's important potentially. I mean, is this a, is this an admission that we are consolidating, or is this and that we can't return from if that court case? Is I'm, successful. I'm, I'm not a lawyer. Yeah. It's a, it's a phrase I <laughs> get to say you relish so, yeah. so often. <laughs> but uh, but I, I I feel like there have been court cases where you know laws have been in implementation for several years. By the time a court gets around to saying actually this law is invalid for whatever reason, and you know whatever was done under it has to be reversed. And then this is a to the extent possible. Agreement. You tell to me. the extent I possible. Trust your crit, your yeah, opinion. I think I, I think mechanically yes, um, but I also think that in t in terms of a judicial decision, mm -hmm. um, but in terms of a legislative decision, if that option becomes available, it sounds like if we um, voted to go forward with the um, authorizations, that we would not have that option, even if the um, newly formed board wanted to exercise it, um, because it sounds like you wouldn't be able to undo that. For that delay, for that one year stoppage, is that is that how you I don't know the answer. I, I, I don't know that. What I know is that we and what Lori and I talked about reading the notices that Lori's had is that people are saying you need to declare what you or you're going to be at July 1st if you want us to be able to to keep services running. Okay, so what what if this happened? Um, we ended up giving notification mm -hmm. the legislature. Um, ended up passing the option of, of putting off the consolidation operatively for a year, um, and the new board voted to exercise that option. Um, would we then be able to undo, again, by sending out not notifications to the entity and reestablishing the old accounts, or would that be just such a nightmare that everyone would say, oh, we can't do that, it's going to cause too much confusion for whatever reason? Um, to do that because you'd be going through the same process you are now, only in reverse, establishing more accounts rather than consolidating them, and that, so would that, is that possible to do? I or, doubt it. Or you, I you mean, doubt I'm it. not going to recommend you do that. I understand that, but it's, I'm asking you if it's possible. It's like no different really than undoing what's, what would be, have been merged so Chris, based on, Chris, a, on a judicial decision, mm -hmm. only a tighter. But to kick the can frame. down a road no. for one year, to me, right now we have settled negotiations. Mm -hmm. We have a system where things are up and running, and I would think that we'd want to do this in a timely manner and not. I would not recommend you defer a year. I can make this happen. No, I understand that. But well, I just want to make sure I go on record as saying that because okay. some business managers are saying they cannot, so I can. Cannot what? That they would prefer the year delay. Oh, okay. We're ready to go. Right. Right. And for our employees, we're ready to go. Yeah, yeah. I think the main question is like, what is ultimately our responsibility? You know, like we, right now is, you know, it sounds like the employees are also getting nervous because they, they won't be, we won't be, so that is our ultimately is to hold our system together too. So if I, I personally don't see a problem just having talked to several of the legislators, all of them that we talked, and you were there to Scott, none of them had an intention of undoing Act 46. The only no. intention was to, to, to delay and give more time. So, so this just helps us keep, keep going to what we need to do, protect, protect our employees and keep our schools thriving. And if we need to put a stop in a year because the lawsuit comes to fruition and you know suddenly Act 46 is not, existence we we deal with that then but right mm -hmm. now we, we you know we hold the backs or our, of our employees you know mm -hmm. of our schools that's I feel strongly we have the right. backs of your communities that you have to protect here too which is but, but the, I, I'm assuming that our communities want to protect our students and our mm -hmm. and our employees too yeah. they, and our teachers are members of our communities I agree with and that. they are they, so so it's it, it's all together so I'm not saying that there's no valid that the lawsuit is not valid or that has no merit whatever you know I can't have very many opinions mm -hmm. well, you're given here as a very bad choice 
it's a lose lose you know situation but we for don't both sides. Um, employees. <laughs> I think you know there's some truth right to what you say. I mean it's it's uh, you know and I. I, 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 I empathize with the sense of loss and discomfort and, and outright distaste that that um, you know some people here have with having to make a decision like this um, and what it means. Um, and I really do get it. Um, but at the same time, you know, here we are. You know, we are the people in the room. We've been we've been put in this position. Um, by the legislature, um, it hasn't been forestalled as yet, and so now we we are the ones in the room who are have are faced with a decision of, you know, can we provide some comfort and continuity and stability uh, for our staff, which is our our absolutely our most important resource in the school system, um, for being able to serve kids effectively. Um, and it's a it's a hard decision. You know, for all the reasons that have been stated, um, but I am not sure how I, I at least could, you know, say to our staff that we're just not willing to make sure that you get your health care on July first. I don't know how I would say so, that. Can I ask a question? Uh, uh, <coughs> uh, Glory, as yeah. I think this is what you said, and I want—I mm -hmm. don't want to put words in your mouth. As far as the court case goes, supposedly, well, I'm not going to say any supposedly, if that comes down to show that we should not consolidate or there's a problem with the debt or any of those items, did I understand you to say that if we were to, we that you could undo it all? It would be a lot of work, mm -hmm. but it can be undone. Yes. That's what I hear you, what mm -hmm. I hear you say. Yes. Okay. And I just, for clarification purposes, in um, relation to your point, Rick, uh, at the organizational meeting, there was a resolution right up front that basically mm -hmm. said something along the lines that no action taken by this body is to be construed as uh, acceptance of the forced merger. I, I assume that that vote remains valid. That was the, that, that was the meeting that constituted this body. Correct. That right. Yeah. Of, yes. That organize this body. So, I think that that remains part of our founding charter in a, um, you know, um, in a fundamental way. So, uh, my own feeling is, um, well, it's not my feeling. My my thought is that um, we should, you know, try to get it so at least the schools can operate. But understanding that that in no way ratifies or accepts or um, countenances the, um, the validity of the force merger. Assuming it can be undone. I mean, I'd be good with that. It, yeah. And I think, um, I think Dorothy's question to Lori that it, that it can mm -hmm. be undone. Yeah, it's a good mm -hmm. one. Have everything fine. backed up. Yeah. <laughs> good. Okay, so, so if, it, if it was not done, teachers would still have their health care. Right? No, we're not guaranteeing that if you have to go to one entity. Right. Okay. It, but the one entity would be in the future. Um, on July 1st, if we didn't vote for this consolidation now in terms of joint accounts, teachers would still have access to their health care, right? We don't have a budget. So at well, this I, point, so we, right, but you just have to understand that. We're just um, talking about mechanics here. We're talking about more or less a bureaucracy of how to administer mm -hmm. uh, the benefits and the salaries and things like that, right? Well, we're also talking about payment. So about what? We would need to have a way to pay for the health I insurance. I understand that. I don't think mm -hmm. the, this really isn't a budget discussion because... Not yet. Budget, it will be. It will be because it's all be. connected. We've got to go to that next step after this. <laughs> okay, so you're saying that the passing First, of budget is tied to this Yeah. One. Everything's tied. Well, so let's go back to answer your first question, Chris, yeah. before you get to your why. If the way you were asking the question just then, mm -hmm. I interpreted that as if there was a delay this July 1st, 2019. If there isn't a delay July 1st, 2019, and we don't notify people now, 
we can't guarantee that we'll be able to have, there won't be a break in service for benefits. Okay. So am I, am I, is that really that, clear? That's good. Okay, so. I just want to, because I understand, I, I think over the years I finally understood how you, you want to hear all the nuances of the different possibilities. Mm -hmm. So if there is a delay, we would not have to make that decision today, but we don't know that today. Did, was I clear on that? No, really. Okay, so if there, <clears throat> right now as of today, there's no legislation that's passed <coughs> out of the conference committee and has been signed by the governor. So we're working on the existing legislation that stands, which says we are consolidating July 1, 2019. If, the, if there is <coughs> legislation, that allows either for the House version, which would allow us a year's delay with nothing done by a merge board, or the Senate's version that says the merge board has to seat and then take that action. Mm -hmm. What you heard from Lori from Dorothy's question was, it can be undone. It's a lot of work, but it can be undone. Does that answer that part about a year delay? Okay, I think the response to Dorothy was in relation to a judicial decision, but the same answer would apply to a legislative decision and a board decision to implement a delay, right? Mm -hmm. yep. Right? Mm -hmm. okay. so, but to be fair, view. you would be coming here and saying, this is a nightmare, you shouldn't undo it for you right. it's you two or three would, months' our, time. Our, our, then, our recommendation okay. would be that. You're exactly right. Okay. The okay. mm -hmm. board doesn't have to follow our red recommendation. I understand that. The, the uh, hydraulic pressures of <laughs> clients are I, amazing. I understand that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I understand mm -hmm. that. But I've also seen our boards not follow that, too. I have, Chris. I, I so um, I want to hold the payment question until you understand all of this about these uh, notification issues, because we have a bigger issue around money and budget that's coming down the pike <coughs> right now with a June 25th budget vote. So I want to make sure we're through all of this, because then we are going to talk about, and I wrote you in the memo that I, cover memo that I wrote about the budget, is we have a cash on hand issue that's coming down the pike. So that I want to kind of put that aside so, right now. So that's, well, actually, if it's <laughs> but just that important in this discuss, overall discussion, mm -hmm. we should have that now before we vote on this other issue. Oh, I don't need you to vote on it. I just want to make sure we answer all the questions. OK. About when do we need to vote on, on this notification issue? Mm -hmm. You do, like, do tonight, but not right. You don't need to okay. vote right now. OK. Mm -hmm. <coughs> OK. Are there other questions? Or, sorry, I, I just wanted to add that, you know, two of the articles that we agreed on are to, you know, have our backs <laughs> if the, you know, as a, that if, uh, if they conclude the articles would be illegal, that nothing that we have done will, you know, we, we, are, we resolve our rights. So, mm -hmm. so if that gives any comfort to it, you know, like, by also voting in the articles, whatever we do right now, it's, we're already saying in the articles, you know, we are not, no, not, to not that. as much just concern. like the resolution that you were saying. I'm not as much concerned about a court decision because I think that that would trump everything. Yeah. I'm more concerned about losing the option from a legislative decision. Um, because that, could you explain that? Yeah, because if we uh, vote and have these authorizations signed, I'm hearing that they really can't be undone and you would be essentially merged. Um, and this year, as opposed to Next year, fair to say, in terms of the operation of the of, of the new district. No, not fair to say. Fair to say that it's hard to do. I'm not going to go where you're going to go, Chris. From if I'm going to state it, I'm okay, going to say but it's going to be difficult to done, and it's going to take personnel, many personnel hours to undo it. Yes. Okay. So that's that's my concern. So, but what is the, what is the option that you're worried of losing the extension from? Yeah, the potential legislative option. It's not it's not in existence right now. But what I'm hearing is that if we both say yes, go do this, that even if it comes into existence, it will not be an option. But understanding that that extension doesn't mean I'm just concerned that we're going to run out of time here. So I'm going to make sure that we okay. give we should go on. So we'll we'll go on. time to the yeah. budget issue as well. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> the next. Um, issue that we have right now is Laura's been working with our financial institution um, that we've used for the past several years to uh, loan us money in lieu of taxes. And one of the things that they notified us <coughs> during April break, I think it was, right, Laura? Mm -hmm. Just last week. Just last week, was that 
you know, we, they asked about, you know, what are you looking at for timelines for budget vote? And we told them, you know, June 25th looks like about when we'd have a merged budget vote if we were one entity. And they said, that's great, but we won't lend you money until you're 30 days past that vote to make sure there isn't a revote action. And we, because we've never been this close to a change in fiscal years with a budget vote. Mm -hmm. Um, so that puts us, and we don't have the figure tonight, Lori, it's, it's, I thought it was a pretty easy, and Lori, after about a half hour, got into my head about how hard mm -hmm. it is to cal calculate the amount of cash we need on hand to cover 30 to 45 days without money in lieu of taxes. So we would have to start looking at what we actually have for cash on hand which isn't necessarily what the general fund balance is because there's invoices going in and out. So it's like four months worth of tracking what's going in and out with money. So Lori's been, I asked her to clear her desk today, tomorrow, and Monday, so next week we can report you what that figure is. Um, but it's not a small, it's not a small figure. Um, and I don't have an idea of like, am I talking ten thousand dollars, ten million dollars? I don't think I'm talking ten thousand. I don't think I'm talking ten million, but it's somewhere in there. Um, and because there's not, it's not. You can't just because I said to Lori, well, let's just divide it by twelve months. She goes, yeah, you can't do that. <laughs> and you know, I, just some sort of interpolation from the old calculus teaching. I used to do. She's like, yeah, you can't do that. It doesn't work. Can we look at the ledger from last? That's exactly what she's going to yeah. do, Will, but it's it, it's going through a lot of detail. And when when revenue comes in and when revenue mm -hmm. and when expenditures go out. So it's a lot of timing. And we have to look at contracts and when we have to pay them and what are, if there's late fees attached to them, how far can they be? Because we want to be able to give you what the minimum bottom line is to tell you what that is. The place where the money is for these districts is in capital funds and in fund balance. Mm -hmm. But when you see a found balance projection, that doesn't mean that's the cash in the checking account. But we can't because there's receiving funds, right? Okay. Receiving and because there's receivings and expenditures going out of those. But we'll have more information next time. But yeah, so you hit it all on the head. Yeah. I guess. Do you want more information on that or do you understand? The yeah, do you understand the, the situation yeah. of these? Because yeah. I mean traditionally you taxpayers pay money to bridge the gap between yeah. right. And we need a voter approved budget. budget. June, uh, and yeah. so we, in July, whatever. Yeah. And so we need the voter approved budget, or in the legislation right now, is if there isn't a voter approved budget on June, June 1st, both in the House version and in the Senate version of H39, there's ways of getting to a budget right. on July 1. We can borrow money to. No, not to borrow, oh, just okay. to have a budget. Okay. So if, if we don't, I think the language, though, if I understand the Senate bill, not to split hairs, is. If there is no voter approved budget by July first, right. Yeah. So we would sort of put ourselves in a position by approving having the voter mm -hmm. approved one on June twenty fifth. That that clause of that law would no longer be in effect for us because that's right. Yeah, yeah. So it's, um, it's like a stopgap measure if we if we can't get it together to have the voters approve one, right? Yeah, right. So. It actually might be just because voter approved means also it's I think exhausting any revotes. That's just right. I just meant the, the way the law is written, the way the bill is written, I should say, mm -hmm. it, 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 it's laid down in the in law what the budget would be. Oh. It's basically rolling up all the, the budgets of the of the forming districts from this year and adding some X percent number. Yeah, yeah. So that, that's your budget for next year. It doesn't yeah. require voter mm -hmm. action at that point because the legislature would have declared it by fiat, essentially. Yeah. So you've said in your memo that the lender who last year did our revenue anticipation loan has said that so that that's a very specific kind of loan, right? And I, I understand that it's probably very favorable rates and, and all that. But uh, is there other sort of uh, bridge mm -hmm. financing? No, it's because we don't have. This isn't our first. This is our first year doing business, so we don't have any historical prior year. So well, normally they would look at that and an approved budget in order to run these numbers for the way that municipalities and schools borrow money. So we can cover that in more detail at the next meeting. If you have questions, send them along. Um, is there but collateral? Yeah, There's a lot of yeah, collateral. Agree. Well, the thing is, is the, the current legislation says um, if you had a prior year, you could use 87%. If you had had a prior year budget, there is no legislation right now for 
the situation that about 13 or 14 merged schools districts are going to be in. I understand that part of it. I'm so just, that's that's what the <clears> bank <throat> is going by. I'm just talking about a, a, to to borrow money. Mm -hmm. One thing you can borrow money against is anticipation of revenues. Right? True. Another thing you can borrow money against is physical assets. So I'm just wondering, we have physical assets. So I don't think we've, we've had that question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I, I would suspect that they wouldn't value this very much because they're not being able to take it and sell it yeah. to mm -hmm. right. cover the loan. Yeah, I mean, probably mm -hmm. not no, but capital able. funds and fund balance, that's a good right. way. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's right. liquid. Well, we'll consider that. Thank you. Can we agree to a higher rate for 30 days? That's what we're going to look into. Okay. But I think it all kind of current legislation has to be changed, number one. Yeah. Yeah and or we have to get a voter approved budget so if we can get the voters to approve our budget on june um, 25th mm -hmm. without a reconsideration vote that just means that um we might not make as much of a interest income uh spread that we have been That'd making be correct, yeah. um but again it, it's coming down to the voter approved budget on june 25th if we can get that through i'll be sleeping at night um the <laughs> town clerks though will probably end up having to do two tax bills no matter what uh -huh. and the payment dates will have to be adjusted no matter what um from their prior town clerks? um yeah. years mm -hmm. so when you talked about the cash flow i do need to change the cash flow because the town clerks actually collect the taxes and remit them to the school in lieu of the state paying us um 20 days after the collection date so i'm expecting that if the voter approved budget goes through june 25th um, we would probably get our first deposit on October 1st instead of August 15th-ish mm -hmm. that we've had in the past yeah. to, to 30th. Okay? So the um, so this is an issue we have to talk about next time. Mm -hmm. You're notifying us. We don't have the information that we need actually to get into a discussion. We don't need about. any action for you. Now, no. but we, we, we are trying not to give you stuff <laughs> right the night you've got to make a decision. I know we've done that with the transition stuff. We're trying to get people to think it about it. It probably is going to happen <coughs> whether you want to do it or not. Right, right. we're trying. So I just want you to I get it when you guys say, hey, give us some time to think. Then so can I do like two minutes of course, on each of budget and then we can go more into it next yeah, yeah, time? Sure, sure, sure. The budget that's in the packet, I'm starting on page eight and going into page nine. I'm going to start on page nine. The format that's on page nine that has each school building and then the supervisor union the total. This is a this time meeting budget. I'm not giving you this as a format to go forward. It doesn't mean you can't, and I said in my memo, and I truly mean it, I'd like feedback. How do you want this presented? Where do you want it to go? But this was to show you taking the budgets we have now, because there's lines in here we will not have in future budgets, i.e. assessments. There won't be assessments going from you know, one merge system from buildings to the SU. It's all one big budget. <laughs> but we wanted you to be able to see, you know, here's each school district as they sit today, the supervisory union, and then the total. There are some numbers that will change in between lines because if you remember at the supervisory union, we have, we collect revenue and build the net, i.e. transportation, special education, and build the net to the school districts and assessments. So that revenue numbers will increase so will some of the expenditures within the line but the bottom line budget of 33 million eight hundred fifty four thousand seven hundred sixty nine that is the bottom line of the overall budget um, but we wanted to we want laura and i talked about it and we said let's have steps through with the transition board because if anyone has to get how we came from where we were to how we're where we're going it's this group we'd like the voters to get that too so, but we really want to make sure that we're, it's, it's an education plan to kind of understand how did the budget come from where we were to where we're going. Does that make sense for everybody? Yeah. So we really wanted to show each one lined up here the way we did this um, to get to those totals. So the, the question of the offsetting revenues, that yes. 4.4 million, yeah. um, that, that comes back in. Basically, the edu the um, overall education spending for the combination for everybody is totals up the same. Yeah. True. Yep. So the even though the um, the expenditures overall expenditures appear to be four point four million more, the actual education spending is the same. Exactly. Okay. Yes. Yeah, that doesn't change. Okay. But that's what's going to be difficult for 
I mean, it's difficult <laughs> for board members sometimes. It's going to be very difficult for our towns. And so we wanted to work with all of you. To, and that's why I generally mean when I said in my memo, we'd like feedback. You know, what's going to help folks to try to understand that, that the ed spending isn't changing, <clears throat> uh -huh. but the overall budget expenditure, wow, it looks like you just went from $29 million to 33 What in the world happened yeah. here? But that's the revenues that are offset. You've got to show those in your expenditures. Right, right. Or we didn't have to show that before in the old configuration. So, so Laura's been doing tremendous work of uh, putting together. So you see that I handed you out tonight because we just couldn't get in the packet in time. What it would look like for last year and this year, we do not have actuals. The actuals are just too different to go back to budget year 2017 because I pushed, Lori likes it when I walk in her office, hey, let's talk about this. And she's like, no, 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 no. And she's right. She's right 100%. So yeah, I'm the one who's wrong and said, hey, I'd like some actuals. No, Bill, we can't. It's just going to be, it's hard enough just to add up 2019, this fiscal year budget, and saying, what does that look like different for next fiscal year? And, and she could go into all the details. I just trust her when she says, your, your idea is not going to work. Um, so this is kind of getting closer to what a budget would look like going out to the voters. There, are, I want to point you on the second page. You'll see something, the second box that says SU assessment. We deliberately left it there for you tonight. And you may say, hey, for the voters, it might be good to deliberately leave it there that the SU assessments are zero. I would not. No, no, you, you, you tell us. It's up to you. It, makes, it looks like a fake savings. Right. Yeah. Um, right. And it just, it's always, the assessment has always been there, just in a different budget form. Right. I, I, okay. So, so we'll take that one out. Is that, I'm just, right. That's my. Right. And so we're fine with however. I just want, yeah. we're trying to step yeah. you through this yeah. evolution because then we'll, we'll create this and get closer to what would be presented to the, well, this is probably what, 90% Lori? Oh yeah. I'm towards right. a pre presentation, what we think the presentation is, but that's, you're talking to the two people that have been looking at this. Mm -hmm. The leadership team had all this on Tuesday as well, and they saw that piece of the ESU assessments and could see that coming out, but. Okay, so, well we're gonna come back to this in a big way next yeah, week. Yeah, next mm -hmm. week we'll, we'll be spending a lot of time on this. So again, being respectful of the fact that the Cal's board is warned to meet here in 10 minutes. Um, I just want to come back to this issue of the uh, item on our action agenda. Um, as we were discussing earlier to approve the transition notifications listed on page five of the agenda and authorize the superintendent to sign all documents and contracts on behalf of the Washington Central Unified Union School District. Uh, is there anyone who is interested in making that motion? Is that the whole one? You can do it in two, separate, you can do it in two separate motions. You can do that. Yeah. Would you like to, so, friendly yeah. amendment, would you like to? Yeah, so how, how do you want to divide up? Both? So there are two different pieces, uh, yeah. right? So take part one, deal with that, and then part two. Please. So let me just read what it says. The first one would be for yeah. to approve the transition notifications listed on five, five. page five of the agenda packet. Okay. Is there a second for that motion? Okay. Anyone? Anyone want to second that motion? Well, okay. Is there a discussion of that motion? I think if we were in a deposition, we'd say, is that a verbal response? Well, I are we are we ready to talk I'm I'm in favor of I'm in favor of Oh God. I <laughs> I feel like a rat climbing onto a sinking ship um, in order to try to keep it from going under completely. But it, what's important to me is, is to make sure that our schools can run. And it seems to me that the case has been made pretty convincingly that this has to happen in order for, um, for us to preserve some modicum of, of stability for the um, for the people who work for us. At the same time, I just want to underscore that 
agreeing to this does not mean that I'm agreeing to the forced merger in any way. Um, and I don't know if we need to put that in a motion or I, I'm content to just let it stand from the previous, from the organizational meeting. I just want to make sure that that's understood. I understand it. <laughs> <laughs> we understand that's it. Thanks. And I echo what Scott just said, so I'll be another rat on that sinking ship. <laughs> but I also, nice from a business standpoint, drew. I totally understand the process and the <clears> time frame <throat> to get this stuff done. Um, I <clears throat> am. I will vote for it, I, but I also, again, I think it is one of those, you know, slow but sure erosion of um, independence of the, of the board. We're taking, we're stealing a decision from the future board if there is a legislative um, option here. We're just, we're doing that. Um, and if there is a legislative option, and I am on this new board, I will vote to have it undone. Um, at that point, um, but again, I, I think the uh, um, for the uh, sake of our staff members and students' well-being, um, to put this in effect and then undo it later if possible, I think is uh, unfortunately the way to go. All, all we can do is use the information that we have right now. Um, the fact that the, we don't know what the conference committee is going to say and we have no really finality on the legislative side isn't something that we're doing to the future board. That's something that the legislature has done. All we can do is, is decide based on the best information that we have right now. Mm -hmm. I've said my piece and I agree with Will, so I, I, I agree with Scott and Chris, but I also have this thought what's driving this also is our present form of technology 40 years ago not that I want to go there but 40 <laughs> years ago we would not have had to make set up these accounts two months ahead of time I, I see the, the way our society is driven by those time frames has interfered with this as well. But I, I want to take care of the staff because they're, they're important to us, <coughs> to our children, and to the district. And I do this with a bad taste in my mouth. Are we ready for that question? Mm -hmm. uh, the motion is to improve the transition notifications listed on page uh, five. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? The motion carries. Uh, is there a motion to authorize the superintendent to sign all documents and contracts on behalf of the Washington Central Unified Union School District? So we will. No, second that. Um, but discussion, what contracts would it be for services from these entities? Um, well, so for an example would be, um, we currently have a retirement plan with TD Ameritrade. Um, they would be sending us a new plan document that would say Washington Central Unified Union School District and Bill would need to sign it. There would be HIPAA documents for the new name, with an, you know, for the new plan. Bill would need to sign that. He's historically signed those without board approval, but we just felt like tonight we needed to to put it out there because there will be documents associated with these notifications that have to be signed. And does signing contracts that are, that may come into being here, um, contracts that would uh, basically cement in for the next year um, a merger? Not that I know of. Yeah, I it's mainly okay. just to set up all yeah, these plans, and, you know. Plans, yeah. So we have Thank to give you. like. Blue Cross permission to talk to VHI about this new plan that all the employees we moved to. That's the way the motion. But you have to yeah. sign all these. About the word contract. But that sounds like an um, So for contracts, what would be a contract? Um, I look. think like the Veemers next week. We I alluded to it earlier, Chris. We're gonna mm -hmm. if, they, if there's a contract we're signing, we're coming to you for for authorization for mm -hmm. individuals. Like I know for Vermont uh, retirement, we're gonna be coming to you asking for authorization to set up some of that. 
Okay. And it's not just there is an actual contract there that gets into some money exchanging hands. Mike, I'm okay. considering the e-rate application a contract. What? Our e-rate application, we get revenues mm -hmm. um, for our WAN line. I consider that a contract yep. that now it's going to be instead of Washington Central Supervisory Union and instead of having the school names the contract to get revenue will be WCU USD. Okay. So that's the kind of contract that I would expect it's just to set us up. Okay. Not to change anything but to just set well, up who's going to get the money and um, where's it going to go. Are we ready for this question? Yes. The motion is to authorize the superintendent to sign all documents and contracts on behalf of the Washington Central Unified Union you. School District. And who seconded it? Sorry. Uh, Chris, Chris, Chris seconded it. Okay. Uh, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? The motion carries. Thanks. Not to rush, if you have future agenda items, Please email them to me, I think. <laughs> Otherwise, we're, without objection, we're going to adjourn at 5.58 p.m. Thanks, everyone, for coming. Thank you. Know, I, got, I think this is a, something that should carry forward in terms of visiting, having meetings at the different schools. Oh, I hope I hope yeah, 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 more does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.